You are now listening to the Cinnamon and Sugar Podcast featuring D'Angelo Williams and Gary Barnage. You push play and they'll push the limits. It's your boy Tom here, and we are back with another episode of the Cinnamon Sugar Podcast. He, he does love to bleed everybody's ears with his intro. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. I know. I know. I know. He does every time. <laughs> Hey, you know, normally we start our segment off with the How Was Your Weekend, but we're in contract negotiations with you, who, after as good as it went last week, so we're going to bring that back next week. If you're watching on YouTube, you might notice there's more white people on the podcast than normal today. So, <laughs> I, I don't know who loves to introduce the white people. <laughs> so, D'Angelo, we're going to let you go ahead and introduce our new white friend for us. I, so this, I, I don't understand this is how we rounding out Black History Month, bro, but we, you know what? <laughs> We we gonna do this. We are gonna keep adding that splash of vanilla to this coffee though. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so we got in the building with us, high res, uh, rapper, YouTuber, entrepreneur. Um, I, I I mean I I really don't know how to explain you because you I mean you in so many lanes, you driving so many cars, and I mean you smashing so many stars. So. You know, tell I don't us know about that. I, 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 I'm about to have a wife soon, dog. No, it's nothing like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe a minute back, but yeah, not, not for a long time. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've been on the podcast for one minute. I'm about to get fucking. I'm not saying he's good at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's stressed out over there right now. He's <laughs> just, up, bro. I just ran a mile. I'm drinking hot tea. It's 80 degrees out. I got a fucking sweater on. It's too hot. But I might go shirtless by the end of this shit. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. So how how is, how is the rap game, man? Uh, and and we gonna we gonna ask you that. Well, I guess my question is this: so if anybody was to ask me outside of like. If anybody was to ask me, like, who is High Res? I'm like, High Res is a rapper. That's my homeboy. You know what I'm saying? But mostly everybody know you from YouTube. Yeah. So are yeah. you okay with just being a fucking YouTuber, bro? Or are you a rapper? So, like, when I was young, I always cared. So I've been doing, I'm, I'm 27, but I was rapping since I was 15 on YouTube. I had a million views on a video when I was 15 years old. I'm like a washed up, like, Disney star that's never got rich. You feel me? <laughs> it's like... I didn't, I didn't even get the pros like of being a washed up Disney drug addict. I got all the bad qualities of it and none of the good qualities. But um, as I got older and shit, I started realizing like whatever makes me money, man, like obviously not to the point where I'm selling my soul and being a weirdo, but like people were, people called me the McDonald's rapper. They called me, I did some shit with Pornhub years ago. It was, I wasn't naked. I wasn't naked. Um, <laughs> they called me the Pornhub rapper. They called me the Uber driver rapper. They called me the burger, you know, so it's like, they try to, I always like constantly, society in general, they try to put people in a box, which I would love to talk about. And I always felt that since such a young age, I was putting them, you with football, y'all know that. Hey, you, no, no, you're just gonna catch these pets. No, you can't run. You can't do this route. Go do that. Go do what you're good at. Don't fucking try something else. You feel me? So that's what people try to throw you in that box. They don't let you perfect the strengths. They assume your strengths right away, whatever, whatever your weakness is. And as I got older, I'm like, wow, YouTube is a real easy way to make money for me. Um, it, it like doubled my income, it doubled my fans, my subscribers, my views, it brought my attendance out more to my shows. And when I was young, I was like, ah, I don't want to be a pranker. I don't want to be a skit guy. I don't want to be a comedian. I just want to fucking rap. And all that shit just kind of like led to more views on the rap. So I can't really hate on, on an avenue that helped me get more eyes and ears on what I'm trying to do at the end of the day. So I don't care. You can call me whatever you want. You know what I mean? Call me, call me whatever the fuck you want. Well, so I agree. I, I think it's making the money, so it's a good thing. But I think the reason why there's a negative stigma to YouTubers because you have people like Logan Paul who people despise, and they're YouTubers, and they get hey, everybody Logan gets Paul is his in. homeboy now. They hang out and shit. No, no, no. no I'm saying, I'm shit. saying, like, but people that's like, homeboy he's now. To you. No, he's trying to scare you. He's trying to scare you. I, don't know, like, I never, I never. I never said shit to Logan Paul in my life. <laughs> well, like, that's what people, when people think YouTubers, they think that, and they despise people like that. Like, a lot of people don't like him. You are him. not wrong. You and are not wrong. I moved from L.A. for that like same that. reason, bro. Like, I moved from L.A. because I was around a bunch of demonic, weird fucking people. And I'm not talking about locals. Locals are amazing anywhere you go. You feel me? Like, I'm talking about Hollywood, bro. Like, I was around such weird, demonic people trying to fucking, like, invite me to swingers clubs and fucking... 
do drugs and and, I, and like I'm I love to I love to party when I was a kid. I'm not talking about that level. <laughs> I was like, it doesn't sound bad nah, at all. I don't know nah, why nah, you nah, nah, but it's not, bro. Because I, I I still at the end of the day I'm a man of God, bro. Like I, I still believe yeah. in like in like a very nuclear family, like a one wife taking care of your kids, focusing on like I love like the J Coles of hip hop, the Kendricks of hip hop. I really love those guys that that focus on their fit. It seems like I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. You feel me? Yeah. But from the outside, it seems like just very a very family oriented guy and i i i've read enough I'm, I'm a big reader i've read enough over my life that like i don't want to spread my i never wanted to spread myself too thin and la had me doing that where it was like i was giving my energy to too many people too many places and i realized like that same concept we were just talking about is like it's so much easier to have one job you love one woman you love some kids you take care of, you know what I mean? Like some people run away from that. Like my dad, whoever it is, like people in a conventional setting, they hate, they always want to escape to the world that I already live in. Me living in that world, you know, y'all know that with traveling and party, y'all every, y'all y'all know that lifestyle. So it's like living that lifestyle for long enough, like like I have no interest in 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 in, in hanging out or having sex with an A-list celebrity woman. I I literally it is not. Maybe when I was 16 or 18, that was my that was my goal. But now my goal is literally like, and it might change when I'm 30. I might be like, hey, what the fuck were you thinking, you little idiot kid? You know I mean? <laughs> so, I, I'm I'm not like some shaman who like fucking knows everything. You feel me? But it's like I don't know, man. In, in recent times, I've matured as a young enough man to realize just what's important what's not and la specifically going off what you were said and i don't know this is not even a testament of logan paul jake paul i don't know nothing oh, about of course, that yeah. but, but just that whole lifestyle like i saw people it was i used to go to parties youtube kids parties and it was 10 million dollar houses and they had no furniture bro like where the fuck's y'all furniture like where do y'all sleep you feel me like there was there was porn stars hanging out with call of duty gamers that are nerd like it was fucking weird dude it was like a strange lifestyle that like you know, I, I I was able to float in and out of it easily and shit. But you know, I I went home and I fucking bathed in, bathed in holy water and shit. And I you know, then I moved back to Florida. Recently. <laughs> it's funny you keep bringing up the porn star stuff because later we're gonna have a little segment yeah. for you when it comes to that kind of stuff. Ah yeah, uh, yeah. So, so absolutely, man, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. But I'm happy to be back in Florida, man. Yeah. So so you 16, 17, You know what I'm saying? You just like okay, you you turn it into like this YouTuber. If you will, you you cutting all these raps and stuff like that. What what do you think your specialty is? Freestyling? Do you got to write some nah, shit now? When I was younger, I could freestyle, and that was probably because I smoked a lot of weed back then, and I don't smoke a lot of weed anymore. But now that I'm like once again fully sober human being, it's not that easy for me to just come up with shit right away. So I got to sit down and be like you know a normal adult and like let me write these raps today. You know what I so mean? There's so there's nothing like, wrong with writing raps because everybody in the rap nah. game is like, oh, he can't freestyle, and I'm like, I I don't care if he can freestyle or not. If he put so out I good think, music, put out good music. I think that the whole freestyle shit was more of an art, like in the in the eighties and nineties, because that really showed. You know, it was so new still, and it was like you know pe people were break. It was b boys and shit. Like all your 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 whole your only job was to to do to impress somebody right away. That was it. Versus now you got the labels, the distribution. You know, a hundred people are eating off you. Like nobody cares if you can spin on your head anymore on a fucking cardboard box. You feel me? It's like so. It's the shit's a little bit more intricate. So you expect. You know, you expect less and expect more, depending on how you're looking at it. If that makes sense. Okay, so I, I, I and this is just me. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shoot you with some real shit, cause I, I, I know the people want to hear this, and, and I hadn't had opportunity, and, and Gary don't know about this, and Tom don't know about this. I was just gonna spring this on you when you got here. So people, people, include myself, at some point in time, was like, man, you know, it ain't hard work being a YouTuber. You making all this money, and yeah. you just posting damn videos and pictures and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I mean, you just you making the kill. If the internet was to ever crash, you ain't got a job. Yeah. So yeah, my question to you is: is how hard is it to captivate and capture the 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 absolutely the millions of followers or subscribers that you have? Like, how much work do you have to put in? <clears throat> so I, I I signed up on. So like I feel the same way you just. It's it's funny. There's levels to this shit, right? Like. Like, you know, so in a locker room, like, fucking people might talk shit to the rookies. I feel the same fucking way. Like, these motherfuckers come into the shit. They, they beat my subscribers in a day. They beat my views in a day. They beat my numbers, whatever, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I've been doing, I signed up for this shit actually coming up in March. Um, 
March 2010 is when I signed up for YouTube. And, and for seven years, I didn't even break 100,000 subs for seven or six years. For six years, I couldn't break 100K. And just it's one of those things like right when you break 100, you go to 200, 300, assuming the content's there and the shit makes sense. So right. it's like for me, for me, it's still organic. It's still brick by brick. It's still so authentic that like I still put in my 10,000 hours. You feel me? Like over the last year or two. So it's like the shit is organic. But I feel the same way you do. Like there's there's guys that come in. I look at their, their Instagram, 100,000 likes. TikTok now is the new shit. Like I always been the guy that can crack every code, like every algorithm, every code, every social media. And people always hit me up about that. You know, like fucking uh, labels, friends, rappers, entrepreneur, everybody. Yo, how are you going viral on YouTube and then Twitter and then Facebook and then blah, blah, blah. And then you keep moving, moving, moving and, and flipping the script and figuring it out. And TikTok is one that I never, like I have hella f followers on TikTok, but I never figured out how to like break a record. And all these cats, I don't know if you've been on TikTok or know anything about it, but like I'm talking about there's cats on TikTok. You know what TikTok is, right? Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. We know what it is. I'm not so on it though. Yeah, bro, good. You don't want to, you, you might get caught, catch a charge if you go on there, bro. It's fucking weird. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't wrong. So, so, you know, I, I, TikTok, there's guys where I'm talking about one tenth, one hundredth of my, one hundredth less of my following, and they have a, a gold record, a platinum record, and then they get signed, and then it gets pushed by the whole machine, and they probably sign a shitty deal most of the time, which, you know, isn't really what I'm jealous of at all, because I've been in a shitty deal, but it's just one of those things I wasn't able to crack, man, but but to answer the question, you know, if you want to, just like anything, if you want if you want to put in, you know, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years in anything, whether it's football, whether it's the rap game, like, you know, it, it, there's obviously a lot of variables and a lot of factors to that, you know, especially with you, with your body, I could rap if I'm fat as shit, I don't need to, you know what I mean, like, I don't need to be in this. <laughs> I don't need to be in the gym and shit like y'all, but I am in the yeah. gym. But um, you know, it's the same thing, man. It, like, like I, I, I started hip hop selling selling mixtapes. Like this, the the the, or, the old the OG way you y'all know about is is yeah. how I started. I was signed to a label when I was sixteen. I was dropped from the label when I was or seventeen. I was dropped from the label two years later, and then like streaming came, and I wasn't streaming enough. And I I, I used to tour 70, 80 days out of the year and and live in a van and sleep on a like I I really did that shit where most of these kids, you know, it's like let me put something on TikTok and get a fucking million dollar deal and fucking never leave my house. It's like. It's a, it's a weird world, bro. So, so hold up. You're with me or you against that? Like everything you said, you was with me. And you... <laughs> I'm with you, bro. I don't fucking like rappers, dude. What? <laughs> rappers, <laughs> rapper, rappers are hella... Bro, it's like... So, all right. So, yes. A rapper can blow up. It's hella easy to rap. And it's hella easy to fucking go viral. 100%. But like to, to, to sustain the fan base, to have a 10, 15, 20 year career after that is like that's where that's where the work comes in and some people do it some people go viral they get lucky and they have the right ogs around them and they're like yo you better listen to everything i fucking tell you because we're gonna make you a star and you and it's gonna and, and you might get lucky enough that they don't take advantage of you because there's a lot of, of snakes you know with the, with any paperwork any contracts right yeah. agents all that shit but yeah if you want to last fucking 10 15 20 years you better you better you better build the house not just the fucking walls you feel me yeah, cause so this is the this is the one that get me, bro. This is the one that get me, and and I still for the life of me, I cannot understand this one. He has over two million followers on Instagram. He has a gang of followers like everywhere. The homie that shot the 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 that's on the skateboard that was listening to Fleetwood Mac drinking the oh, uh, oh the guy the yeah, yeah the fucking how the, uh, the hell what 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 so, why why so to, I, I me to go from my what, angle what? it's like it's it's it's, it's why am I interested in this? Why? Actually, I don't know, dude. It's it's like it's 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 not a there's a formula, yes, but there's also just like a, like when somebody's to me at least like like when somebody's radiating like love and positivity, like it can't fail any brand, right? Like any fucking brand, like Dogecoin. I I always talk about Dogecoin on my social media. People make fun of it. It's such a joke. But I look at any community. I don't even look at like the fundamentals or the technology or like I don't listen. For the 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 the, the way to uh, relate this would be I don't look at the raps. I don't look at the beats. I don't look at the shit. I now look at like you know the the branding is more important than the fucking raps. You feel me? It kind of sucks that that's the case. It it never was like that. But now like we live in such a fast world with technology and we 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 demand to be entertained every day. You feel me? Like. Right and real quick. That's why TikTok's blowing up because it's just yep. you know it's an instant. Uh, gratification you swipe to the next one and, and you know I, I mean i'm sure that makes the rap game harder just because yep you know it's hard to put out uh you know a meaningful you know i'd say you know piece of work 
yep. in 10 seconds. <laughs> Let's just be honest, though, Tom. Is it really a rap game or is it a beat game? Because we don't really listen to what the hell they saying anyway. It's all so about it's, the beat. It's even beyond that, bro. It's even beyond, like, like everything. And I agree with what you're saying. Like, because the shit's moving so fast. I didn't realize that I felt old until recently until I checked the Apple Music charts. And I knew literally fucking nobody. And I'm right. only 27, bro. Like, right. I, bro, I, I, I like. I don't know anybody. It's it's little poo poo and young young burger and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here, bro? And it's like, <laughs> it's fucking weird because like three like back like in, in our time, right? Like we're only a few years apart, all of us here for the most part. I don't know yeah. the dude on the mic. He sounds kind of old. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's young. He's actually one. younger than all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta stop. You. <laughs> you gotta stop smoking, man. Or <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't swear. Hey. That was, right, that um, was funny because I was listening. My little brother was listening to somebody the other day. It's like. It was like dip, lean, swag. I was like, and it just came with dip, lean, swag. I was like, what? What are you listening this to? Shit man? is weird, man. Because like, we had our time, like, like growing up, like, like when, when we were younger, we had our time with like uh, shoulder lean and like the da- soldier. Like there was dances hey. and like we had that shit. You know what I mean? And that laffy taffy and D4L and all that weird like dance, funny music and shit. But now it seems like we're just here forever. You feel me? It's like, it's like that was like little brief stints that we had and shit. And like, I, I agree with what you're saying, where it's like, oh, we only care about the beats. And that's mad true. But we also really only care about like the brand, bro. We don't look at 6 9 Like, it's not even like his beats right. or sound is good. Like, we just, it's like, how flamboyant can we make motherfuckers? Or how, or how much like pussy can, can a woman sell? It's like, there's no, it doesn't matter anymore. You feel me? Like, people are literally going and finding people that don't even make music. And make, having them make music because they're like, yo, we, we could sell that. Oh, she's an 18-year-old girl from Bob. Oh, let's sell that shit. Oh, she, oh, she got tattoos? Okay, bet. You know, oh, he's got pink fucking hair? Okay, bet. They don't even care if you if you could rap. You feel me? It's like it's like making the band or like uh, the other one with the, I don't know. So is that like part of the box you were talking about earlier you were alluding to you wanted to get into? Or is that where they're looking for people that fill one little s- section of a box and they don't want them to go outside of that lane? Or yeah. what, what, what were you talking about when you were talking about that earlier? Yeah, so I mean, just my whole career, I was boxed in and, and, you know, I could have easily going back to what you said, D'Angelo, like as far as if it's easy or not, like I could have, I, I don't want to sound like the, the, the guy, you know, I could have been blown up, you know, so I don't want to sound like this bitter guy. <laughs> right, That's what you're going to sound like. Anything you say after <laughs> this, <laughs> it's, coming, yeah, it's not, coming. It's it's one of those things, man, like I could have genuinely ran towards one thing the whole time for the rest of my life forever. And like, you know, I genu- like I said, like I'm a very intuitive man, like you know, mo- I have money, thank God, only over the last few years. And, you know, I have a good relationship. I have good friends. Like, only in recent times have I been as level-headed as I have been and, and more in tune with my with everything, like, to the point where none of that shit that I was chasing would have mattered. And, and, and like I said, I, I'm, it's not like I'm broke saying I could have been rich. I'm good. You feel me? Like, I'm doing I'm doing all right. I, I looked up I'm your doing, net worth. I know you good. I'm doing, <laughs> that, shit, that shit is definitely wrong, but it's, I don't know, maybe one day. <laughs> but I don't know who makes that shit up. But my point is, man, like, wh- when I had a viral McDonald's rap, you know, I could have been the fast food guy like they wanted me to be, and I could have fucking, I could have just been, you know, cashing out all day, forever, forever, and I could have been the guy sitting out fucking McDonald's fucking saying, do you remember me, the McDonald's rapper guy, you know what I mean? But I just, I keep my feet on the ground, bro, I keep moving at all times, and when people expect me to do something, I, I go left, and it's like, I'm not, like, what, why would I, why would I do everything you, you expect me to do just because that means, like, what, uh, five, five times more money, or three times more money, or one, because... Like I said, I'm in this for the long haul, bro. This is my, this is my, I look at the shit the way Michael Jackson's estate. Like, this is gonna feed my grandkids. This is gonna feed, I'm, I, I got, I got investments in crypto. I got investments in altcoins, a bunch of crazy shit we, we could talk about. And it's like, I don't, it's to, to me, when I was younger, legacy meant so much to me. Like, I gotta die a hero. I gotta be, I gotta be Drake. I gotta be Ye- Yeezy. I gotta be Kanye. Now it's like, bro, I admire Tech Nines and I admire the dudes that can go out and do whatever the fuck they want. They don't get bothered. They're, 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 they're they're appreciated in their city. They have tens of millions of dollars. And there's like, it, it, you know, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but it seems like a genuine, you know, life. I, I love the I I love the Tech Nine reference because I love his whole his whole persona his whole career because he's always did it his way he didn't care what anybody yep. said and everything is about lyrics for him yep. I'm a yep. big lyrics guy I don't care if you have a good beat if it's not yep. doesn't if you don't have the lyrics I don't care about the song because yep. to me that means more is more substance to it to me because I think it's harder to write good lyrics than it is yep. to make a good beat and, so and I, I, I 
What you saying? Uh, this, this gonna be my last question. How I ain't mean to cut you off. Let him respond to. What are you just trying to cut him right? I'm gonna let him respond, but I'm just letting him know. I want to hear y'all talk, man. I've been talking too much. No, 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 no. Because this gonna be the last question we ask about the rap game and shit. Because we want, I want to hear your, I want to hear how you feel about what's going on in the damn world and what we got to talk about. I would love to. So I, I ain't mean to cut you off, but I do gotta ask you this question before we go in time and him start hitting us with the questions of the day. This is the question I have for you. I'm a young up and coming rapper. I don't really know anything about the industry. I'm trying to get into it. I think I sound amazing. All my friends around me tell me I, I, I sound amazing. How the hell do I get noticed in such a crowded room in terms of getting my music out there? Because Lil Nas X, that little yeah. fucker, he put out one good song. He ain't put out shit since. Panini wasn't even but, close. Hey, so, let, so let me tell you. So, so this is what I always thought for so long. And another reason why I stopped caring so much about the biggest numbers is Lil Nas X is still one of the top 15 or 20 most streamed artists on Spotify. So even if the machine and the label's not pushing him, like we live in such a world now, like even like 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 someone like Mike Jones, Paul Wall, Slim Thug, I'm just naming Texas, but like when we were, yeah, exactly. That's it, that's what all the all the OGs when when we were when we were younger like from any area the dudes who had records and like you would consider one hits or two hits they would they would never fall off today you feel me like in in terms of monetary like like they yeah. might not be in your face and they might not be but be, it's streaming is so easy if you have one two three four five records that just streams crazy you you're a millionaire bro you you could be a, you could have tens of millions it's so fucking overcrowded but it, and it's and it's so oversaturated but it's also so easy like if you break through and you're not a complete like drug addict or, or like just a brain dead idiot like you're gonna be good forever but if you don't the ones that make it though are the brain dead <laughs> so you idiot. make it so you might make it but mo bro you should see the, the paperwork i've seen from fucking i don't even call them friends because i can't be around idiots but like just like people's paperwork i've seen that it's like they own 15% of their music, 5 or 10% of their music and shit. They're, they're signed to a, they're signed to an artist who's signed to an artist who's signed to a label. And then they distribute it for another 20% and their manager takes another 20% and their lawyer takes 5%. And then they live in California. So they're paying 30% in taxes. You're negative 20. You don't even own yourself at that point. You feel me? So I know so many fucking people like that, where it's like, we don't have agents. Not, I'm sure there's shitty agents in football and shit that, that puts you in terrible deals, but there's not even like a, like some union. There, like nobody cares. It's, it's us versus them there's no middleman that like you might get a good look from like luckily i'm jewish so i know 100 lawyers so i never got taken advantage of <laughs> <laughs> but it's facts man it's facts and that's facts too man my uncle a lawyer my brother a lawyer my girlfriend's dad's a lawyer uh fuck yeah anybody else i know that's not a lawyer gonna become a lawyer so <laughs> Go, I, I got one more question tom can i ask my last question Lord, bro? Angela, you, you just said the last one's one your last one, one but okay this, no this is my last one for for real though, because I've been wanting to get this question because he's a rapper. He's been in the rap game for quite some time. What the hell is up with the money in the videos, bro? What why 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 is it sexy for me to have eighty thousand dollars in cash? I, like, it just goes back it, to the same shit, man. It's sex sells, money sells, and that's the machine that that's what like like only in recent times have I figured out how and like I said, how I realized how demonic you know, Hollywood and, 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 and just like this big machine of, it's usually, once again, it's usually white Jewish old men that are running these labels and shit. They could be Christian or Catholic. What I just, you I just, Jewish, Jewish. You so just let me old. tell you, so, so let me tell you, I, I see a lot of these fucking people, man, just like these dinosaurs, just taking advantage of fucking young kids. They, they like, they don't, they don't have a lawyer. They, you know, they, they have one record that popped out of nowhere. The, the kid, the kid did the legwork. He's 19 from wherever, Atlanta, fucking LA, New York, Canada, I don't fucking know, wherever he's from. And then boom, the fucking Hawks sweep in. And me, luckily, I, I've been in a bad deal when I was younger and there wasn't a lot of money on the table. There, there, was, there was not a lot of risk or reward. So I learned so much about this shit, man, where it's like, like money doesn't doesn't excite me anymore. Like I need resources. I need I need creative control. I need to 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 own my masters. I need my kids to be able to eat off this shit. There's so many requirements if you want to work with me because being independent, I I make you know a hundred percent of myself minus taxes and whatever else I do. There's nobody who eats right. before me. And and when I was signed to Sony when I was a kid, I gave up fifty percent of my merch, fifty percent of my touring, fifty percent of my music, fifty percent of my. If I started a restaurant, if I joined the league, I better give up fifty percent of everything I did under that under that paperwork. And that was a normal deal. That was like that was like they're like, wow, you get to keep half yourself. I'm like, damn, that sounds fucking terrible. You feel me? So uh, I don't remember the question, but yeah, the money and shit. It's all it's all demonic and devilish. <laughs> 
It's just about it's weird, flexing. Man. You know, everybody loves yeah. to go, flex. Go, go ahead, Tom, because he, he's stuck on the machine right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we, we always talk about the machine in the NFL all the time. So we yeah, always talk we about how there's so many things that are so screwed That's up and everybody just it. deals with it. So uh, it's yep, everywhere. Yep, yep. What right, you got what's for today, Tom? That's what's crazy. Well, you know, we you brought up the Pornhub stuff, and I told the guys in our group chat before now. that I had a I had an interesting question for them. Um, so I work I work at a, a, a honky tonk bar here in Dallas, uh, high res, and I do all the marketing, you know, social media, all that fun stuff. And so this weekend uh, we're out. My birthday was yesterday, so we're celebrating my birthday this weekend. And so I had uh, some of my friends out. And they're looking across the bar and they're like, yo, you see who that is? And I'm like, what? No, who? And I, you know, I see a friend that I know, a guy, but he was talking about the girl that was with him. I was like, who is that? And they're like, that's, that's so-and-so. And she's, she's a porn star. I was like, what? Because, you know, my homeboy's over there just chilling with her and like hanging yeah. out. They're trying to like have a good night together. And I'm like, no, I don't, I, mean, I don't know her. He's like, yeah, now all night I went around. And people would be like, you see, you see that that porn star is in here, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, that brought me to this question. Can a porn star have a regular relationship or like a regular nightlife? Fuck because no. once fuck no. <laughs> no. once you've been out in that that field, I feel like Bruh. people are gonna put that on you every single time they see you out. You got well, your green well, like and- Everybody seen think, your girl butt ass. Well, and they're and they're all gonna be like, well, I, I think I got a chance with her then, especially if she's solo. Like, exactly. I got a chance with her. I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash that. No, and that's she true because like. I, even though obviously she was very into the guys she was there with, everyone was trying to push up on her and be like, because they felt like they had a chance, like just like you said. So I wanted to get y'all to say, can a porn star have a normal relationship? Uh, it depends what normal means, man. It depends what normal means because I knew I knew a lot of porn stars in LA, and they would shoot each other. They would film each other's porn with other other people. Like they would they would direct. Like hey, like literally married couples with kids and shit. I, that's why how weird LA is, bro. I would see him in a sushi spot. I'm like, yo, I saw you last night at two a.m. I'm like, this is fucking weird. It was it was it was in my computer. It was, it was just fucking. It's weird, bro. But yeah, like I, I've heard the stories of normal relationships where it's like, you know, I've even heard scenarios where it's like a half open relationship where where like like ev- I don't want to say every guy's dream. But the scenario you're exactly thinking of is basically a lot of people and a lot of porn stars in L.A. It's like a, a loyal woman who only brings back women and you, she can't sleep with any other member, her husband. And then I've seen open relationships in LA through the porn stars where they film each other's videos. And then I've seen a lot of breakups that it's like, yo, like jealousy and they, you know, they, per, you know, they like normal, like, I don't wanna say they're not normal humans, but you feel what the fuck I'm saying. Like, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, what do y'all so, think? So, so, so I'm gonna say this, this is why they can't have a normal lifestyle. First of all, the one thing that made you famous is the sacred thing that bring all mankind supposedly their most pleasurable experience ever all right oh, so, so your, your it, argument is, is work versus pleasure like yes once you get yes home that, with- that's my argument right there like how do you if you work so long of having sex how do you just mentally turn it on to where it's pleasurable now and it's not sex even to this day there's women that are not porn stars that think sex is a chore so if you think sex I, is a chore right 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 so if you think sex is a chore then you know you shouldn't be in the relationship that you're in in the first place because it's yeah, supposed to be. Yeah, I think pleasure. it depends. I think it depends on the girl. I think it depends on uh, even the man, bro. Like not to like I said, bro. I've it been don't meditating. depend, bro. It don't depend. They can't have a normal <laughs> lifestyle, bro. There's no, no, no way. I- no, nah, I see what you're saying, bro. Once again, so I did that video with a bunch of, and I was 19, 18 or 19. So like, you know, I'm like a kid in the candy shop at the time. You know, I could, I swear to God, to a hand to God, never touched, never did anything. But I asked every question. I'm like a little kid, like, like asking, I'm like, so like, what's the weirdest scene you've ever filmed? And someone's like, oh, well, I step, <laughs> I, like, I swear, I swear. She's like, oh, I, I step on a dude's balls for $1,500, like an old man's balls, like some, some weird like fetishes and shit like that. And uh, but it depends on the woman, man. It, I swear to God, if you ever, you ever seen shit like that, they kick people in the balls and, that, and they get off by like getting fucking beaten by a woman and shit. It's fucking Bruh, weird. So, dude. so you mean to tell me that you can recover from that? Like you could go out and you can live a normal lifestyle. Like there's no way that you can see my wife or my girlfriend or whoever my significant other is 
at 2 a.m., like you said, spread cheeks with somebody else. And then we out having tea and crumpets at motherfucking noon the next day. Like I, I just, agree with you. I agree with you in the sense of I wouldn't, I wouldn't live near that lifestyle or around it. But there's a lot of people that it's all a balance, man. It's all like I don't know, like it's, it's just like a diet. I mean, it's not a diet. But it's like, so so <laughs> I, I would think like it would have to play like I would think porn stars could probably do it easier than a normal person in a porn star. Hundred percent. Absolutely. You're normal. I like. And this was my question that ties into it as well. Could Did you, you just call them not normal? You fucking cancel. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, need to, we need to cancel Gary Barnage. Cancel Gary yes, Barnage. Yes, yeah, let's cancel start, Gary. Let's start the hashtag cancel Gary. Like, Who the fuck is Gary? We got to cancel him. <laughs> they're, they're, like, they're like, why are they trying to cancel SpongeBob Snail? What the hell? <laughs> well, I, it, leads, it, leads into the, it leads into the other questions. Like if you if you were not a porn star, could you date a porn star? If, you're, if you found out your significant other was a porn star... I, I would you, say fuck right? no to that. I would say fuck no to that. I had a homie who who found out his girlfriend the exact worst way you can think. He found out his girlfriend was on Pornhub by looking on Pornhub. And this was his girlfriend of a few years. And she had different color hair, different contacts. She was really trying to get like go undercover and not get caught. And then all the homies looked it up. You already know that. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. we all <laughs> Like, did you have that one, like, they're showing everybody, but showing on purpose, like, yo, is this her? Do you think this is the same person? But they really don't care if it's the same person. They just trying to I put your business out there. I don't think a normal person, fuck, I'm going to cancel You me did now. it. You're canceled. <laughs> <laughs> cancel his ass. Cancel our shit. I don't think a non-porn star can date a porn star. I think that's that's where I, that's where I would I would say that's just not the easiest. You, you better be a very confident individual in order you know because i know i knew a lot of those dudes out there bro like you've seen the memes i don't know if you've seen the memes before i'm not even gonna get i might get canceled the further i talk but <laughs> so, you, you've, seen, you've, seen the, you've seen the motherfuckers with with a third leg and you know like <laughs> you feel me? I, I would not I, I i'm well i'm well endowed all right i i do well i do, I do well in, 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 <laughs> i do well i do well in every department but living in la bro that's the only time me and my girl were like, yo, we got to move back home because there is some, <laughs> there is some well, fucking. I, I definitely think it would be a completely different situation because that is something that is. Uh, you said you had to move back because of all in third leg. Uh, all right, bro. <laughs> oh bro hey, 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 hey. I once, it, I, I oh, once brought porn stars <sighs> to a party. <sighs> Of a professional athlete, and then no, then I brought him home. Nothing, nothing went crazy. Nothing went crazy. It was, a, it was a definitely wild party. Definitely, I'm not going to fuck. I'm not going to get nobody caught up. And it was definitely a wild ass party. And then I brought, I brought them. You know, I dropped them off and shit. Me and my, mind you, this is me and my girl. It's me and my girl, a, a male and two female porn stars. And I'm bringing them back to their house, not my house. I'm not trying to bring no nothing crazy back to my house. And and the homie, the homie with the, you feel me with the. <laughs> With the elephant, got it. With, yeah, the, he said this. So I had to use the bathroom. I'm like, fuck, you know, why do I got to go inside and use the bathroom? You feel me? This is like, I'm talking about next level shit, fucking swings and sex chambers and dungeons and crazy shit, right? This is, it, all right, so I got to go and use the bathroom. It looked like a handicapped person lived there with all the sex toys and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. I am in uh, tears, bro. I am right, in tears. Right, right. So I go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom, and my girl's still in the car. And I come back out, and I see him. You know, I see him talking to my girl, whatever. And I've been with my girl for for a long time, so I'm I, I'm not worried about her. I'm worried about these motherfuckers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he's so he he says like you know it's 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 like yeah come on in let's take some pictures let's hang out you know let's just have a little drink you know it's like that weird like Harvey Weinstein ass shit bro it's like fucking right. real all the time living in LA people would be like like um you know come to my house and I'll read your script like like to, to my girl never to me come to my house and I'll read something we'll have a bottle of wine I'm like I'll love to be there it's like no 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 not you you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man! But yeah, yeah, that was that was that was a highlight of my moment, man. Fucking um, hanging out, hanging out with some athletes, hanging around porn. Like it was, it was cool to know where I stood. But it was L.A. was different, man. L.A. was a different breed, man. Well, I, I just noticed this. I I want to take a second, real quick. Can we appreciate what D'Angelo has sitting over top of his shoulder right now? Holding it down. <laughs> 
That's all my <laughs> shit. Is, KFC shit? Is, that a K- is, that a, is that a kernel right there? Yeah, oh, <laughs> 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 Gary got some mayonnaise. Gary got some mayonnaise. Right, right. right. <laughs> Gary got some hey, helmets. Y'all, y'all blur my background and shit, man, because y'all know his asses be looking at what's going on in the background. I actually think I know what that is, by the way, too. It, it is. You know what it is. Yep. Here. It's an award we got from KFC when we went and talked to him. Oh, <laughs> You have had me die. You can't kill this energy time. What we got? Gary, I know Gary had a question. For yeah, you. yeah. So I have a question. So obviously everything is, it's, I guess you can say it's political, but I don't really consider it political. But everybody's making a hoopla over the minimum wage thing. Everybody's like, oh, needs to go to $15 or people are against it. I want to know y'all's thoughts. What do y'all think? I'll go first if y'all um, want me to. Or do you want to yeah, go Yeah, do ahead? your thing. Do your thing, man. Do your I, thing. I, I, I'll go first. I, go think it, I, I think it's crazy, and, and this is why I think it's crazy. The inflation will go through the roof. It's going to be the same as it is if you're getting paid seven fifty or eight or whatever the minimum wage is right now. Yeah, shit's uh, gonna cost more. Yeah, it's just gonna cost everything's just gonna cost more at fifteen dollars a head in the first place. So I don't know why you even raising that number like for who? For for what? I, I guess I not I know for who, but for what though? At the cost of tanking the economy? Like yeah, is you know, it, you is know it what really you know to me, man, is is a big problem with with politics in general. Is is politicians think that there's this one size fits all, you know, right. like policy that everybody's gonna somehow benefit from. When you know, when you cut the pipeline jobs, like you know, when you when you get the green jobs, you cut the pipeline jobs. When you when right. you add more pipeline jobs, you know what I mean. So it's like. All policy to me, all policy. I'm like, I'm a liberal. I'm a, I'm conservative in nature, you know. As far as like, like I talked about, like you know, I don't, I don't dress too crazy. I, I don't got no Tell tattoos on my Jewish, face, bro. We got it. I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm frugal with the bread. I'm, I'm very in, in tap yeah. with that shit. But as far as politically, I'm, I lean more towards very limited government. I don't think, I don't think government should have control over fucking almost anything that a human does with, with, with anything that they choose to do, right? But that, that specific, like this one size fits all agenda, never really fucking works. I always feel like any politician who gets into office they change the policies to benefit their fr- Warren Buffett whoever their friends are you know what I mean it's like I'm gonna yeah. get in office I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of these jobs and it's not gonna help the environment at all but I'm gonna make you think it does and my friends are gonna eat okay next president gets in we're gonna get rid of the things you did and now my friends are gonna eat and it's still not gonna do shit for the environment and it's not gonna do shit for you and it's like people don't once people wake up and realize that it's like you know, there's always two or three reasons shit is getting passed. Like, tell me how, tell me, so I'm passionate about this shit. Tell me how fucking Nancy Pelosi can can invest into Tesla, Fisker, right? All this green, like like green energy, solar energy, and then lobby to pass green things. How is that? How is the SEC not getting in on something like you can't change policies to benefit your stock holdings? How the fuck is that not like so obvious to people? So it's yeah. funny you say that because we had that conversation previously about the game stock and Robin Hood. And how they limited people from buying GameStop. And then they're going to investigate all that. But a guy literally went on national television, a billionaire, and said, hotel stocks are going to crash right before COVID. Yeah. And why he was owning investments in hotel stocks and all that kind of stuff. So he could buy it all up. And he made a billion dollars off of that when it all crashed. Yeah, because yeah, he yeah. held the stocks that was going to fall. The, and- fact, the fact that people can, can, can short squeeze shit and make money on the failure of not only the common person, but society, the um, the economy. So it's like, check it out. So these billionaires make money all the way up, all the way up. They have these secret dinner meetings where they tell all their friends that we're all going to pull out at the same time. And when it crashes, we're going to short it. So we're going to make money when it comes down to. We're gonna, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to short your shit, you short my shit. We're going to make money on the way up, pull out all of our fucking inch, all of our, our, our earnings. And then we're going to make money when we crash the fucking stock market. When that people became billionaires in 2008, when the fucking housing market crashed. Mm-hmm. How is that possible? Right. How can, how is there how is how is any business profitable in a time of tragedy? It's fucking mind blowing to me. No, I agree. But to bring it back to the uh, point yeah, of so the he, minimum so wage. translation, he does not believe in the fifteen dollars an hour. I don't. I, I, I think <laughs> I, I believe that that's gonna be. I don't know who. Once, like like you said, D'Angelo, I don't know who that's benefiting because right. not not only are not only like this like um. Obama has something under him. I, I was young and I wasn't massive, massively into politics at the time where it was like certain companies, you, ha- you had to give your uh, employees um, benefits and shit like that, right? So people stopped hiring full time. So it was yep. like, hey, mm-hmm. let me stop hiring. So same concept where it's like, if I was Jeff Bezos and Amazon, people have to realize 
like Jeff Bates, like these these elite people that they talk about, they're not liberal or conservative. They're they're in the business of keeping whatever they can do to keep you where you're at and keep their money and make more money, make more money. I would do the fucking same thing. I'm still I would do good. <laughs> I would do good things for humans because you know I'm more of the Cubans or you know whatever you want. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. I am. I'm more of a philanthropist. You know, I I still care about fucking humans. You know what I mean? To right. me, that means a lot. But it's like these people get so lost in the fucking sauce, man. It's so it's so backwards. They, if they if they think that every policy is implemented to benefit them and not a hundred other people in fucking suits ten times more than them, then you're stupid. Right. No, I, I would agree. So when it comes to the minimum wage, I know D's gonna get mad at this because I say it all the time. I'm half there, half against it. Yeah, so I'm the same way. So the reason I why I say I'm half there is because I think it should be based off of cost of living of the state you live in. Mm, so if California, it's California, New York. New York then it should be $15 because the cost agree. of living costs that. I if agree. It's, if you're in North Dakota, Montana, it should not be $15. I'm sorry because the they can't afford it. So yep, that, that's the, that's the biggest thing for me. It should be cost of living. And then like, because it's it's a that's simple enough. concept. And p- plus a minimum wage is a is something you're not supposed to be able to live off of. It's supposed to be a stepping stone to yep, a yep, career yep. to make more money. You shouldn't yeah, have absolutely. to live off it. At $15, everybody's going to be living off of that. They don't have not to fast. That's a, basically what a, a teacher's salary is. Bro, and, they make about thirty thousand dollars a year. And, and teachers' and under- arguments. People love to say exactly what you just said. People are going to say, "Isn't that so sad that teachers get paid that?" And and you know what I mean. But I see I see your point one thousand fucking percent. And I agree with you, bro. Living in L.A., I made like you know this is four years ago, whatever. I, I finally made like hundred k, hundred twenty k, hundred fifty k, and I had literally like I left the state with fucking no money in my savings account because thirty percent taxes, state yep. tax, fucking twelve percent state tax, local sales tax. What like if and food and, and cost like you said cost of living mm-hmm. i got three flat tires bro like i had to always maintenance my car nothing's ever it's the most it's 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 the state that takes the most taxes that has the highest homelessness rate you feel me like it has the worst fucking streets you ever been to skid row bro i was on skid yeah. row multiple, not not personally living there obviously I was on Skid Row driving by multiple. It's a third world fucking country, bro. Like yeah. they have diseases you never heard of. They hand out needles and condoms to people instead of. I don't even have a solution, so I can't tell you what the solution is. Yeah. But I, but I know the solution is not giving people clean needles and condoms because it's too, it's too far gone of a problem. You feel me? It's like correct. It's fuck. It's just weird, man. It's just okay. weird. That's 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 my beef with 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 California. It's not even my beef with 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 with. Um, with pe- people, sorry to, to cut you off. People attach the word liberals to Democrats and conservative to Republicans. I have no problem with liberal thinking, bro. Like a uh, woman's choice, I'm all for it, bro. Like I'm also for the Second Amendment. I, like I said, I'm not for government imposing any laws on people. That should be your decision. If you want to go out and live a life and do drugs and fucking do whatever you do, bet there's gonna be consequences, but go do it. I don't think there should be laws in place for you being a drug. I'm not gonna lock you up for being a drug addict. I'm not gonna lock you up okay, for. Okay, so <laughs> I disagree with everything you said right now and and the reason why i disagree with that and we've had this conversation gary we've had this conversation time and i'm glad we could bring you to the forefront of this conversation i am okay when you don't harm yourself and and this is why if you're okay if if i'm a drug dealer or if i'm a drug addict and i get in the car drunk driving and stuff like that obviously the only way Right, right. Those those consequences, like I, me, I could be sober as hell just driving my car. La, 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 drunk driver hit me. I wasn't doing anything wrong. Now I'm dead, yeah. fatal, car crash. But, but I don't. I don't. I feel like we already live in that world where that's that's possible every day. I don't think the. I don't think less government impositions because I'm not saying you. I'm not saying the government shouldn't pull you. Oh, you can't get a DUI. Of course not, bro. Like that. These are all real fucking things. But like you said. If if you if your life is is imposing on my life, absolutely there should be fucking regulations. If you decide to ruin your, that's just that's the I guess that's the conservative nature in me, right? That's the conservative beast in me where you choose your own destiny. You choose to be a drug addict. You choose to be a porn star. You choose to be a scholar. You choose to be a football player. You choose to be a rapper. Like if you you, you choose what you want, you choose to invest in crypto. You choose to get minimum wage. Like. I think I think li- as as little as impositions as possible. Look at like Italy or these other countries. Like like there, there's very little re- guidelines on drugs or alcohol. And I've looked into the numbers. They're in some countries they're better than the U.S. Bro, like it like uh, and and they don't abuse these things because they were so easily accessible. And I don't agree with fucking you know doing it now because they just passed that shit in um, Portland or Oregon, yeah. one of those fucking places. Where drugs are, bro, but it's like, we just lived the whole life not doing that. We better have to purge some of these kids, you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. so <laughs> there's ways to go about this shit, man. But yeah, the, the 15 shit, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with it or not, man. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I, I think it's basically should be based off of where you live. 
it should Absolutely. be based off that because it's not supposed to be something you live off of. It's a stepping stone. So that's why there's a minimum wage because you're not supposed to be able to live off of it. You're supposed to be able to get by and then you're supposed to be able to improve yourself and get yep. a better job so you're not living on minimum wage and then you yep. actually have a career or whatever it is. And at 17 year old, you're telling me a kid going to work at McDonald's, he can live the rest of his life working, nothing wrong with working at McDonald's, but at $15, you think he deserves that? At no, 17 that's, that's years old, that doesn't make and sense. I, Bro, New York and, and and Cali and shit. I wish it wasn't that cost of living, but it but like you said, I just had a conversation with my girlfriend. It, like that's those are some of the only states, the highest tax states. Yeah. It makes sense because you can't live off ten dollars an hour right. in LA. You feel me? And you might be born there and you don't want to move somewhere else. I get it. You can't be forced to go to North Dakota because it's a cheaper cost of living. I get yeah. it. But like I see what you're saying. Like fifteen dollars in North Dakota, you're gonna be the first millionaire there. You feel me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, and if I'm an owner of a business and I'm forced to pay $15 an hour for these, you know, minimum wage jobs. I'm finding a way to get rid of that job. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You're going to have one less yeah. uh, employee. You're going to have, you're going to, I see exactly what you're saying. Cause I, I know that shit. Like I'm at a point where I have, I have employees. There is no benefits or anything like that. And I'm not doing anything minimum. You know, it's more like uh, the W2, what's the shit, mm-hmm. what's the shit called? Um, independent contractors not, not. and shit. Yeah. Independent, yeah, everybody's an independent contractor. You get paid whatever the fuck you get paid for that year, and you don't expect much. You get some, you whatever, whatever. Uh, but I, I, but I, but I'm close to that point where it's like I wouldn't be able to. I would have to fire like one of my videographers or one of my producers or one of one of somebody who helps me with like somebody's gonna have to disappear because I'm not like it's not fiscal for me. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. that and then you and then you're gonna see companies start doing more temp jobs. You're gonna hire more temp people. Yep. Because you don't want more people to have full time jobs. Everybody's gonna be part time workers because yep. they can't afford to give benefits and fifteen dollars. I have a genuine question for. I mean, D'Angelo, the only black person in the room. How do you feel about like this whole? I feel like this way as a white dude. I opened my eyes in recent times where it's 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 become racist to 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 do American business. Like bring your like I used to do my business in China. I brought it yeah. back home, and 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 a lot of people like the people that were telling me not to do it there are talking. It's it's fucking weird, bro. It's like being patriotic is 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 like only a white redneck thing. Apparently, you feel me? It's fucking weird, dude. No, it's it's not that. So the <clears throat> the thing is, and Donald Trump. I think he really put this in everybody's minds is if you do business with any other country without putting us first, then you're not a patriot. And for four years, he's been jamming that and jamming that and jamming that. And it makes sense up until the point where it doesn't make sense. And when it doesn't make sense is when it starts costing you more money to bring it over here. And then all the Americans, when you was getting some done for maybe six cent on the hour over there, you paying a dollar six over here. And you're like, dude, it doesn't make sense for me to bring it here, but I don't want to be unpatriotic. So what people are doing now is, is they still keeping it in China, but they're updating the facilities that they working with over there or working. All right, so in. check this out. So, so side note, forget, forget printing shit and forget China. It's more so like I, so I have friends, Venezuela, Colombia, um, France, you know, there's always like, like, soccer like drugs, drug. it's drug countries, but go ahead. I, I mean, you, you're a, running a legit business, but go but ahead. Just, no, 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 I'm not, I don't mean like that. You know, I, I got, I got fans out there. Right. And, and, and Germany, Germany mm. specifically, I want you to remember that one. They love to wear the jerseys of their countries, the soccer. Mm. It means so much. Yeah. Whereas here, like nobody gives a fuck about the USA team when they go to basketball. You feel me? Like, like it's, yeah. it's not cool to be patriotic. You feel me? I don't know if that's a new thing. Yeah. Cause back in the day when we were growing up, we had captain America and people were coming home from the army and you saw it on TV and it was like, and now it's fucking, you're a fucking weirdo if you give a shit about your, about the place you live because of the history. When I love Germans and y'all fucking did some crazy shit to my ancestors, you feel me? But some of my biggest fans are fucking German. It's like, I don't understand it. Mean, explain, explain the, the theory behind that narrative that's being pushed. You feel I me? can't, I can't, I can't explain it. Cause I had this conversation with Gary and this is the God on his truth. We're at the Mayweather Conor McGregor fight and uh, Mc- Mayweather came out, bro. They booed the shit out of him. And I'm talking about it was insane. I was like, bro, we in America. Conor McGregor came out there. It was a loud pop. Everybody screaming. And half the people in there was American. And I looked at Gary and I was like, Gary, bro, where the fuck are we? Are we in America? Right, he was like, We're people just hate him so much, bro. No, I get it. I get so it. And like, much. Who, but they're who, the same I, person. Who is like, like, I want to see some figures that aren't boxed in to Republican or conservative. I want to see some 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 athletes. I want to see some figures that say, fuck yeah, I love America, without without somebody saying, oh, um, the Bosa kid, oh yeah, he's racist. You f- I want somebody yeah. to step up and be like, I love this country. This is where I'm from. You know, fucking blah, blah, blah. I, I, I un- so he saw Drew, Drew Brees tried to. 
don't you start that shit. Don't you start that, time. Don't you start that. Don't you start that shit today. I'm not, hey, I'm not here for it, bro. I'm not here for it. Let's just let's just conduct this interview like we was doing it. You ain't gonna take me there, bro. D'Angelo is actually a really big Donald Trump fan, and a lot of people don't don't realize that. And so you're kind of speaking to his heart right now. You're speaking to his heart. (laughs) <laughs> that's 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 not what it is. What it, what it is is this, and, and and I try to look through, uh, what. So so my thing is this right here, and and I've been a firm believer of this, and Gary can he can let you know this. I I don't care what somebody do in their spare time. If you if you're yeah. signed up to do a job and you do that job to the best of your ability, I don't give a damn what you believe in. I don't care if you believe in unicorns, if you believe in monkeys, if you doing the job that you supposed to be doing and you doing it at a great a great rater, you're doing it. The, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, he yeah. crazy. But R. Kelly, for instance, like I don't agree with anything R. Kelly has done outside of his music. <laughs> what but you the about damn to say he makes good music. <laughs> he makes really music. He makes really music. The same, music. Music. same exact yeah. thing with Michael Jackson. We've had this conversation. Right, we've, had, we've had music. this conversation. So, so, so check this out. So from, from my perspective, you are able, and 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 these these are the people that I that I I, I don't want to say I love before they can, they already go they already got ten things they can cancel all of us for so I don't give a fuck so y'all separate the art from the artist y'all separate right. the religion from the yes. man y'all separate the yes. race from the blah blah in the moment not you know so this is this is the perspective I've been seeing in recent times especially with these younger kids man and 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 the news and and the mainstream media and the narrative and shit it's like we can like like we can all sit down and acknowledge our differences, right? And 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 also our similarities and we'll have a beer at the end, right? Normal shit. Whereas yeah. now, you know, this 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 narrative preaches that like like we shouldn't have differences. Do you feel me? It's right. fucking weird, dude. It's like it's uh, like this weird matrix we woke up in where we grew right. up appreciating, even if we talk shit, even if somebody was racist to you, D'Angelo, or somebody called me a big nosed Jew or whatever the fuck they want to call me, you feel me? Like so like like I we we still acknowledge our differences. And I, you know, me personally, I never gave a shit. I never, I never cared about anything like that. But now, like, like it's, it's like, hey, none of us can be different. We want, let's eliminate our differences. Let's have, and I'm not on some like fucking tinfoil hat, one religion, one race, you know, one currency. You know, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not far off from it, especially I'm lately. I'm gonna say we got, we got high Q res over here, guys. It's fucking weird. <laughs> man. It's, weird. it's weird, man. It's weird the, the, the shit that's pushed, man. It's like, y'all, y'all know this, man. Where it's like, um. They they pin they pin they you Donald Trump was the perfect pawn man it, with the mainstream media and 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 I'm I'm not saying he didn't do great shit with the business like you said but it was like they they used him so perfectly to stir the pot they showed they showed fucking borders that weren't even Mexico and they assumed people were jumping and climbing and throwing babies over and doing and they they, they and they flashed that all over Fox News every fucking day right and then they showed fucking gun toting Trump flag fucking waving motherfuckers storming shit going crazy all over CNN and it's just Bro, all that's how they make fucking money. That's why the that's why the dynamic will never change in my eyes. Is we're never people say we're gonna become a socialist country. I'm like, no, they make too much money having two football teams and they fucking have you guys fucking yell at each other all fucking day about it. And no. then they have you raising a shitload of money. Oh, and like I, I've said multiple times on here, I despise the media because they he put does. out what they want you to believe and people yeah. fall for it. And yeah. I'm not that what I like to read my own sources, get my own information. I don't just see what I see on TV and that's what I believe. That's not how it is. That's not how life is. And I hate that people do that. And that's why I despise the media. And, and, I, and I, when I you say that, that and just real yeah. quick, I guess, when he say that, I always yeah. tell him it's up to us to decide how right. we want to take the news that's that they're yeah. giving us. So in the Absolutely. end, it still boils down to us. So I don't yeah. want what I don't want to happen is I don't want people to say, hey, he told me to do it or I got my message from him as an excuse yeah. on why they did it. No, yeah. you did yeah. it because you wanted to do it. You didn't right. have to follow them. So every time he say that, I'm still like, hey, dude, you know, you got friends that did some dumb shit. You ain't do it. Why didn't you do it? Oh, I yeah, knew yeah. better. Exactly. Yeah, That's but there's so many Good. that don't. That's a problem. Do, do, there's so many you, that just Do you realize, it. like, that mentality has got, got like, told, like, like there's the, everybody going back to what I said with the Trump shit, like, they'll show you these things, and then now, now there's a divide between whites and, and Mexicans. Boom, right there, done, game over. And then, okay, let's now show uh, cops killing black people at, at whatever rate we choose to show it at, and then now we're going to fucking pin black people versus white people. And if you like cops... We're gonna call you racist, and if you fucking hate cops, you must fucking be. You, you know what I mean? It's like every yeah. you can't have two ways of thinking anymore yeah. we, in 2021. We've already, we, 
Right. We talked about this too. Like, there's no, you can't be for both. You got to be yeah. for you one. You got to pick a side. They make you do that when, in reality, these these politicians have armed security at all fucking right. times. <laughs> they're, they're 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 telling, bro. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but um, black women are in the last year are the number one people to go out there and get uh, permits for for guns in the last year, and that's because, bro. Like we're talking about defunding the police. We're talking who's talking about that? The people that have access to this shit. These people in in a certain community. They're going out and getting fucking concealed carries and, and, and real permits and legitimate weapons because not only – like people are spreading fear left and fucking right. I'm happy. I'm all for the Second Amendment. You feel me? And I lost a cousin to gun violence because one, like you said, bro, like like you said, it, it, it goes back to – this kid, oh, I shot up the school because I saw the fucking news. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'm, I'm going all over the place. That people are going to go look for look for a Trump hat on his Instagram and we're going to blast it everywhere. And right, when right. I don't, I'm, I'm not the type to – to believe, um, fuck, what was I gonna say? Oh, I'm not oh, the type to that. believe oh. like, um, <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> I'm not the type to believe that things are set up. You know, you know how the, the crazy QAnon motherfuckers are like, yeah. school shootings oh, you are got, planned. You got, you got one on here. You got one on here. The, the voice that you hear, time. I, I am sick, you guys. Don't, don't put them lies on right, the streets. So, so let me explain. So let me explain. I'm not the type to believe the QAnon shit all the way to that. But I do believe that when bad things happen, 9-11, school shootings, Capitol riots, BLM riots, whatever the fuck is, everybody takes advantage of it on whichever side Correct. you're able to get the most yeah. clicks on. So, you know, when 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 100 people would, at the BLM so, riot, why would Why would you not, though? I, I can understand why you would capitalize off of because if it was me, I'd do it. And that's just me being honest. Because if it's going to make me some dollars, just like you, if you could benefit off of posting online or posting anywhere, like, hey, I have you a, should I have go. A conscious, I have a conscious where it's like I draw the line. I don't make my money if it's, if, if it's on the backs of, of fear and manipulation and Obviously. like that. I don't I guess I guess I guess a lot of the media doesn't care. You know, I guess a lot of these higher up people just it, it, it's all a game. We're all chess pieces. We're all pawns to them. Uh, but to me, I, I see what you're saying. Like I, I, I go out my way for clickbait and thumbnails, and, and I change the titles, right. and I put fucking, I'll, I'll enlarge, I'll fucking make the boobs bigger. No, I don't, you know what I mean? I'll do crazy shit on YouTube to get clicks. You right. feel me? But not to the point where I feel like I'm manipulating my audience. And that's just, that's just how I was raised. So I, I don't know if there's ever gonna be a day where the media is held accountable, where it's like, I know, I, th you know, this only happened in the last 20 years. Don't get me wrong. Media, with media's always had a certain way, and it's uh, even since um, Reagan and, and, and the 80s and shit. But uh, there was always laws set in place that you would be held accountable if something if we could prove something was printed wrong whatever whatever and i think something in like the early 2000s some fcc shit they like removed some accountability i don't know what the fuck it is but well, i know there's very they, little it's not what they it, it's not that they are uh, moved they removed accountability what happened is is social media came along right and yep. the way that social media is looked at it's hard yeah, yeah. to put rules surrounding it so you yeah, can say whatever a private the fuck company say but it's media? still yeah. Yeah, so you can say whatever you want to say on social media, whether it's right or wrong, and, and there's no recourse and there's no bad to come because it's my social well, media. Well, there is now yeah, because yeah. now you could get kicked off of it now. Right. Well, <laughs> you can get kicked off of it now because of Donald Trump, because they put but their you, But you know they're not going to kick off the people that are that are stirring the pot, that are getting clicks because Twitter right. gets the money, CNN gets the money, Fox gets the money. There's a reason why they didn't kick off all Republican outlets or whatever it is because it's not a left versus right thing how they make, they make you think it's that way. Mm -hmm. They love collecting those checks from Tucker. They love collecting those checks from Fox. That's just not going anywhere. You feel me? That's why Newsmax popped up. Oh, yeah, all that shit popped up because they love people. Are, oh, there's always going to be a divide and they're going to keep stirring the pot and they're going to keep making money off of our fears. And and as soon as people start realizing that their love or hatred for a politician, if that, for lack of a better word, if that trumps their love for their family members, how many cousins you know removing motherfuckers for being Trump haters or lovers? You feel me? It's like everybody remove, and it happens on both sides. I used to think it was just, oh, I love Trump, I gotta remove it. It's like, yo, y'all, y'all were in diapers in the same bathtub together. Y'all can't get right. along over some shit. Right. <laughs> It's bad. Fuck, man, I'm getting a headache, bro. It's crazy because uh, he, he, he done obviously lost some people to this to the to politics. Not, not me. I ain't <laughs> lost shit because I don't have a strong opinion, bro. But this is what yeah. I learned only in recent times is not having a strong opinion also gets you canceled. Correct. You feel me? Right. So it's <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I tell him a <laughs> when I tell a motherfucker, when people, when I when I go, when I go on my Twitter and I say uh, I say some shit along the lines of, oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Trump did X, Y, and Z. That's what's up. And then people are like, you fucking love him. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I just don't hate him. And they're like, you're racist. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you. Hey, but how is? I'm gonna tell you what you don't come back with. 
I, I love all black people. I got black friends. I got but don't try to rationalize with them. Just leave don't that worry. shit alone. I've been, in, bro, I've been in rap for so long, man, where like I love black culture, man. I recognize this shit from a young age. And I, I was never really rocking in recent times with the with the um, you know, what are you doing for black people? I'm like, yo, like I do, I'm a good trust my heart. First of all, I'm a good man. Like trust I, I no, not genuinely, bro. Not only like it's it sucks that I have to fucking explain myself. I feel like I have to on Twitter recently, I had to explain myself that that I donate to 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 something that something that gets uh, people in, in in a bad neighborhood, non-GMO organic produce teaches them health, teaches them wealth, teaches them how to invest in crypto. Teach, you know what I mean? That's where I'm at. I'm at health, wealth, and education. But I don't want to have to feel like I gotta blast all my good doings on the internet. But I'm at the point where we accept and we consume such toxicity on a regular basis, and we're okay with that. Why are we okay with that? But we think it's corny when a motherfucker says the good things that he's doing for the world. You feel me? Well, and that, that's part of the media aspect because they're disaster porn. They don't like to cover positive things. They like to cover negative stuff. And that's yeah. why I've always said they're disaster porn. That's all they care about is negative things. Okay, and so like, like I, you said, this, I, you, it's hard for you to, like, like, like you were saying, like, I would never go on there and talk about all the stuff I'm trying to do for the community. Like, it's not, I don't, I'm not, I don't want the recognition for it. I'd rather mm. just do it to do it. That's the that's thing. My you point. don't need the recognition. You just that's do it because point. it's the right thing to do. And I but, think people, like you said, people want to hear, oh, we need to hear you doing it so we can have proof of it. Why? Yep. I, if I'm doing it anyways, I don't, need, I don't need to show it to you. It doesn't make facts. sense. I, I, I don't never understood that because I've <laughs> never talked about like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing this because it's not it's, it doesn't matter. I'm doing it because I want to do it. Not because people I'm, think if they don't see it, it doesn't exist. Right. right. OK, so right. so I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that y'all said that. I, I'm, I'm glad that y'all fucking said that. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to let y'all have it because I'm going to start. I'm going to start hitting y'all in some of y'all sides and y'all hips and y'all shit like that, especially you high res. So when you say if you don't post it, it didn't happen. Try not posting your girl. On your social media try to go as long as you can not post anything about her but every time she do something bad i want you to post something bad about her like man i can't stand this about my girl and you let yeah. me know how long she go before she say hey you posting all the bad shit won't you post some of the good stuff about me yeah. and yeah. but start now she didn't want you posting her at all but now yeah. that you're That's posting true. her she wanted to make sure that you're posting the good stuff this is what america is today bro this yeah, is yeah. what it is today they yeah. post so much bad stuff when you do post something good it's like, bro, what are you saying look at me for? Why are you saying yeah, look yeah, at me? If yeah, you're going to yeah. do it, do it out the kindness of your heart. You're going to always have those people. I saw a post, bro, the most prolific post that I've ever seen. It was a dog that was, like, reaching out to, like, catch this bird, and he yeah. was falling off a cliff. He was yeah. falling off a cliff, and he said, hey, man, you know, sometimes you could be so focused that it costs you your life. And, like, he was going to grab the bird, but he was dying yeah, yeah. after that. He was yep, going to die yep. after that. Right. Yep. And it, he was saying, if you just step back, take that deep breath and think yep. before you talk, it'll take you a long way. So yeah, with that being said, the, the way I think you should conduct yourself, not you, not Gary, yeah. not myself, yeah. just in general from a standpoint yeah, of should I post good stuff? Should I post bad stuff? Be you. Be you. Yep. Like, hey, if you an asshole, be an asshole 100 percent of the time because that's going to sell. If you funny. Yep. You gonna be funny. Be funny a hundred percent of the time. If you are gonna be lazy, fat, and playing video games, be Gary Barnage a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about hey, the fat hey, part, hey, but I'll give you. Hey, the it's been stuff. it's been it's been a bullshit combo. No, it's been a great combo. But I already talk about this shit so often that let's get back to hey, something. I, I want to tell y'all. Bullshit. Damn. Nah, bro. Nah, I, nah, nah, nah. It's not. It's the the the, the content, man. Is is to me. I'm so fucking. I, you can see I'm passionate about this shit because. Yeah. People, people have so much love and so much hatred to the point where it, it doesn't make sense, right? Whatever. So correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me the year. So 2015, fantasy for me. It's real, real football for you. You guys are real life. It's fantasy yeah. for me. So yeah. fantasy football, I think it's 2015. Is that true, Gary? That's it. You broke a 1,000 yards, right? You, you went is. crazy. It was, all right, so I had Gary, right? And tell me if this is the same year that I think I think Le'Veon was suspended or he was hurt and you came yeah. in for, uh, and you got four touchdowns in two or three games. Was that the same year? Yeah, that was the same year. It, it wasn't against both. the Browns, though. It was against the Raiders. It was against the Raiders, though. But I, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. It was the same year. Cause so I, I had the we same. Were, I had both on that shit, other. man. And and fucking y'all. At, at the time, I had no money, so y'all made. I, I owe y'all the drink. I don't. Y'all not. I, I don't know if that. I don't know. <laughs> I if you just drink, drink, you we that. know how long it took you, you to go that. get them headphones. You got a big ass house, so <laughs> I'm gonna need to get more than a damn drink. I want to get an yeah. invite over. I want to play in the pool, and I want to talk to the girl about the swinger that we're trying to shoot at her in L.A. 
<laughs> yeah, I got you, man. Hey, because honestly, bro, that was a fucking to me. I was so excited because I didn't know Gary. I I I knew I knew D Will at the time. It's like slightly uh, just because I knew Le'Veon and I I knew Pouncey. I knew certain guys like just through social media and through hip hop and shit. And it was just so fucking exciting to me to be like that. You were the you were one of the. I think you were the first football player, bro. That was like just giving me time of day, just messaging me back. First and that was so cool to me. Player, because first black football player. You were the first <laughs> football player, I'm fucking with you. I do got a question for you, though, and then we gotta, yeah. we're got we going to let you go, man. This is a serious question. And, and I've always wanted to ask this question, and I've never had an opportunity to, but you give me that opportunity. Is it tough for a white guy in the rap game to make it in the rap industry? Uh, it goes. It goes back to what I said. I think. I think it's tough initially. I think it's tough, like, to get that first little spike. But like, what? It's. It, it's. It's. Once you're in, you're in. You know what I mean? It's because like. It's like you're an alien. Like people are so amused by you. So it's like once you've been seen by enough people. Once again, unless you're some addict or you're a fucking absolute fucking head case, you're gonna stay around forever. I think. I think it's just. It's that much rarer, you know what I mean? Like most rappers are black, Hispanic, so it's like it's 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 like a fucking. They, it's seeing me is like seeing an alien. You feel me? It's like when they yeah. see me and I break through, they're like, oh shit, you know. If if I get enough eyes on me, I know for a fact I'll, 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 I'm I'm gonna be good. You know what I mean? So let's just oh. go for the top. What's your feelings on Eminem? Oh, uh, you, you can't not fuck, like Eminem, man. It's one of those things. That's even, all he needs to say. Yeah. He's a fucking goat. Even if I, even if I hated Eminem and I was like, yo, I don't really fuck with that. Like, I just, I wouldn't even, not even on some cancel, but like, I just wouldn't say it. I wouldn't fix my lips to say those words because I recognize, you know, some people try to fix their lips and say, yo, Lil Wayne trash. I'm like, yo, y'all weren't there from 2000 and fucking six right. to 2016, whatever it is. Like. You know, if you could last a decade in, in anything to me, if you could last five years at this point to me successfully, yeah. you are a fucking, you are a legend to me. So Eminem lasts 20 years on, on, on a top 100 of albums, singles, everything. This man has, I think he's broke record. Not only has he sold the most hip hop albums of all time, but he's has the longest reigning like, like numbers on Billboard ever, like, like wow. consecutively. Okay, so I, I lied. At, I got another question. I, <laughs> is, is, he does I got so nothing. Is, bro. Is, is Nipsey Hussle the new Tupac of our generation where he died love, before he could complete so many albums? I love Nipsey, man. Um, I think some people would, would, say, would say Tupac. I think others would say, like, you know, Big L. I would say, like, something like Big L. Um, I don't, I don't know, know, man. I love this. Big L, I'll, I'll send you his shit, bro. From New yeah. York, he used to go he, craziest freestyles of all time, bro. He used to say, "Let me, let me." Um, I'll send you some shit. Oh fuck, what is what's going on here? I right, hold up. That's why. That's and why I'll, I don't, I'll, I'll ask you this question that we brought up before. Do you think that Tupac uh, or you know Biggie, you know God rest their souls, if they hadn't have died, if they would be looked at as goatish as they are? Whereas, like, if Lil Wayne had passed away after Carter Three, yeah, you know of course. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's I think it's obvious. I think it's exactly what you think. I think Biggie would would you know would be Jay Z. You know they'd all be in the same tier. You feel me? They would just kind of blend together. Tupac, Jay, even though there was a few five five year difference or something like that, he was still kind of like Big's little brother. Like by this time, nobody cares when you're in your forties and fifties and shit. You you all just you know Snoop, Pac, they all would have been in the same damn category. You feel me? So yeah, it's the same shit. But Nipsey Nipsey was fucking dope, man. Nipsey was ahead of his time with the crypto shit. He was ahead of his time with investing and, and, and owning property. I'm talking about owning the land. And he's very, he was fucking, he was like, cause, and for, forget like his background. I'm talking about hip hop. Rappers are stupid, bro. Like there's a lot of fucking dumb fucking, like the people I come across, they're just, like I said, they're getting bad deals, bro. Like it's shitty. Nipsey was one of those guys that owned his masters, owned all of his shit. He was fucking genius, bro. Uh. And then my last question before we let you go is, if you could give us your top three favorite rappers of all time and then plug one rapper that maybe our listeners haven't heard of that you're like, you know what, this is somebody that I would appreciate that's come up the game the right way. And maybe you hadn't heard of him. Go oh, check him out. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How about y'all? What is y'all's? Nah, don't fuck. Nah, we talking about you. <laughs> it's your time. Shit, <laughs> nah. Don't, you, uh, don't, don't, don't try favorite. to buy time, motherfucker. Come on. Give I'm us your top three and then plug okay. somebody. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's always it's always been... Uh, Biggie Pac, Biggie being number one, Pac being number two. Um, Ooh, I love Kanye terrible, West, terrible man. I love, oh, yeah. I love, I love, I love Kanye, bro. <laughs> Con Kanye was the first album I ever bought. College dropout. Kanye followed me on Twitter for no reason. He only follows like two hundred people. That was fucking cool as shit to me. Um, as far as like OG OGs, I, I love, uh, I love KRS One. 
I love um, Wu Tang Clan. Top three. Don't, and I don't be trying to shout people out. I love, you don't get I love nobody come out to you. Just know, D, you're gonna D, 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 you're gonna have to put your next three too, just so you know. Oh, I'll oh, let cool. you pass. Hey, I'm I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. So you gonna plug the rapper that that that's coming yeah. up that may not have. So we're talking about new rappers. New rappers that we may not not have ever heard of. Like, hey, look out for him because his music's gonna be nice. Uh. I had to think on it for 10 seconds. So you, you, I'll do your three and I'll come back. Okay, that's important. Right. That's, a, that's an important you go, one. You go first, Gary, because I know who you, you're going to hit the McDonald dude, huh? Ain't that his, what is his name? Oh, Tom McDonald. Tom McDonald. <laughs> yeah, he liked Tom McDonald. He's, Tom McDonald's so, cool. Yeah, I, he would never be a top three. Eminem, okay. obviously. That's I like Tech. One. I like Tech. Tech Nine to me, tech just because of, he's been around forever and I like his music. He would be number two. And then number three. I'm going to go old school, and it's either going to be Nas or Cannabis. Okay. Cannabis, man. It's, it's oh. all lyrics. They're lyric guys, and that's what I like. I respect I, it. I'll, I'll give Bruh. you my type. Uh, oh, you got to get I, some I'm for Cannabis. Go, I, I, I'm going to go Eminem. I'm going Eminem. I'm going Tupac. And I'm going J. Cole. Hey. Those are my, those are my top three. And I'm going to go with my like cousin it. as far as an artist. Young Pretty, he just came out with a new song. I think it was it's pretty dope. Uh, I'm gonna plug him. So Young Pretty, go spin him. He so sounds yeah, real guess nice. My up and coming would be Tom McDonald. I like some of his stuff because he keeps. He's he not up real... and coming though. He's mainstream, bro. He, no, he, he's, nah, he's nah, nah. He's mainstream. definitely still up and coming. Yeah, he's fully. Oh, is he not mainstream? He's, he's just and he, YouTube. And he just broke out of YouTube. Like he's kill. His numbers are mainstream. He's he's literally beating yeah. all fucking A list artists right now. Like, and that's his whole stick. That's the whole gimmick. Is like. Yo, like I, you know, like fuck the industry. You know, everybody like the Wall Street shit. Fuck Wall Street. Fuck the suits. He's doing the yeah. equivalent in hip hop. You feel me? Same shit. Okay. What you what All you right. got, Tom? I know your mine. shit gonna probably be country, Lil Nas X. <laughs> no, <laughs> mine mine is J Cole number one, just because he's from the same hometown as me. So I feel like I gotta support. Uh, okay. You know, Fayetteville. Plus, you know, he's just a good rapper. Uh, two is Lil Wayne, just because that was really the first rapper that I listened to growing up that I was like. You know, where I got into the mixtapes and, you know, just okay. listen to him more. So, you know, every time I heard that that spark uh, before a song, yeah, I knew lighter. it was about to be, yeah, the lighter, I knew it was about to be fire coming out. And then third's <laughs> Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Terrible. Fuck you, child. No, Fuck. Let's, no. that, that's a great way to end the damn podcast. Right. Oh, come on, man. Go in, man. That's when well, you Red, Red's got to give us his plug. He's got to give us uh, his plug. Oh, shit, I'm man. Gonna... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Bruh, I don't know. First of all, I think y'all got a connection to Shaq because I want Shaq on the song. Man, hey, you. Well, hey, I know, I know, I know. Well, you already said you know him, but I know uh, Le'Veon Bell. D's got him. I know he's a rapper, hey, right? You know what? I'm out of here, bro. I, 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 <laughs> I already did three. Here, I already did two he songs did a, with he did, a, he did a track with Le'Veon, bro. Speaking of that, what do you think? I told Le'Veon when he was rapping, I was like, bro, you too monotone, bro. I need some type of inflex. I like, like you hit me with the yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, hey, I don't know if you would. Yeah, he was ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time, man. It's like Pop Smoke. They all sound as they all do the same shit. They just fucking right. sound that that same. Like they never really go up or down. Well, if you want to contact with Shaq. Uh, he is an AEW wrestling right now. We do have some people we know at AEW wrestling. So we, who knows if we'd be able to make a contact, but I was trying to do some Shaq raps, man. I, I, I like, um, I like this Canadian guy. His name is Mercules. He's dope, man. He's dope. Oh, you got to check him out. It's fucking, he's tight, man. He's just fucking, he used to be like 400 pounds. He lost some weight and shit. And, uh, he's a fucking, he's a, he's a tight rapper. He's a tight rapper. Uh, okay. All right, well, we'll check it out. And obviously, after our conversation today, next time we do our conspiracy theory podcast, we're going to have to bring High Res back on because I uh, think bro, I, he has some I, good bro, insight. He I'm has gonna some good insight. Ass, bro, I'm going to fight him. I, <laughs> <laughs> he's well, a conspiracy theorist, bro. And, and hey, Rez, go ahead, give out your uh, your social media handles real quick so um, everybody can follow H -I you. H I R E Z on everything YouTube, Pornhub, SoundCloud, fucking uh, in Instagram, <laughs> wherever y'all want to find me, you can find me. H I dash R E Z, man. R E Z, man. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on, and we'll be back next week with another episode of the Cinnamon and Sugar Podcast. We out! We out of this. You are now listening to the Cinnamon and Sugar Podcast featuring D'Angelo Williams and Gary Barnage. You push play and they'll push the limits.